bless you. Thank you for joining us as we share with you with this blessing of the lesson that we've been talking about, the kingdom focus. And now we want to talk about walking with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, which in turn would be called, would cause you to walk in a victorious life. Our scripture comes from Romans 6 and 6. And, uh, it, it is a good scripture. And uh, it talk about the crucified old man. Uh, that which in turn will cause the body of sin that it might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. This is what the Apostle Paul writes to the Romans. And, and then I, I see where we can walk in the Spirit. It is one of my favorite topics. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, but I, I, I've got it from someone else that says, we can live a victorious life. What I want to cause you to do, what I would advise you, that when you, if you want to live a re- victorious Christian life, you must walk in the Spirit. And this is what we're going to talk about today and next Wednesday, walking in the Spirit. First part is, of it is that Jesus wants us to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. He specifies that. Walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. When you walk in the spirit, it begins with the moment of salvation. When we humbly admit that we must put our faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. For without him, we cannot achieve salvation. We must give up our own flesh, and turn our lives over to Jesus more each day. This, you would say, Pastor, this is something for a brand new sinner, a sinner who just been converted. This is for all of us. No matter how long you've been on this battlefield, it says so that we must turn our lives over to Jesus each day, more each day. We are, we are on the road to walking with the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit begins with repentance and salvation. And it grows to the extent where we come to love and to obey Jesus. That's very important. Walking in the Spirit, y'all, <clears throat> is a matter of control. We cannot walk in the Spirit of God if our flesh is in control. The songwriter writes this, I surrender all. So we must surrender our flesh and uh, take up the cross. And this is what Jesus says, uh, and follow me. He says so in Matthew 16 and 24, we will either follow the desires of our flesh and let the enemy get a stronghold and read what Jesus says, or we will follow Jesus. Which will it be, y'all? Who's in control? If Jesus is in control, then we will walk in the Spirit. The Scripture says so. Jesus calls us at this point in the Scripture. He calls us not to a spirit of fear, but that of boldness. He wants us to be courageous when we take up the cross and follow him. He calls us every day. He calls us every day. Jesus will give us a victorious life. That's why I'm saying you walk in the spirit, you get the victorious life. You have the victorious life because you are walking in the spirit. Jesus defeated Satan. We don't need to. We need to spend our, we do spend our time in rebuking the devil. But we don't need to spend no time fearing him because Jesus already defeated him at the cross. We are not to be discouraged. This is something I read in that that really got to me. We are not to be discouraged, but to be joyful as we realize that we serve the king, the only king, and we are on the winning side. 
I'm going to say, I keep repeating what my friend, Pastor Coleman, said. She read the end of the book, and we win at the end. As we journey through this life, y'all, in our lesson, as we journey through this life and grow spiritually, we will come to know a great, great truth. It is the spirit that gives us life. The flesh profits nothing, y'all. That is why our life is uh, on this earth is a constant process in the spirit. Amen. In the spirit. It is the spirit that quicken in the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, that's what Jesus says. They are of the spirit and they are of life. In order to make room for the spirit, we have to give up control of the old self. When we empty ourselves of ourselves, then the Spirit of God will come in and will change us and will empower us to become disciples of Jesus Christ. In Philippians, I'm sorry, in Romans 7 and 19, we will learn this. We will never finish our battle of the flesh. You see what it says? And for the good. We always fight in the flesh. We want to do right, but we end up doing evil. What we want to do right, we end up doing bad. Paul says, he says so in the scripture. Paul realized that he would fight his own flesh until the day he go to heaven. I want y'all to catch that now. Paul also realized that no longer, that we are no longer, that he is no longer, that we are no longer slaves to sin, but we have been set free by the Spirit of God. To, 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 in in, in Paul's early life, he was a prisoner to sin. Paul was a prisoner to fresh, fleshly pride. And he, with that fleshly pride came some ruthless ambition. And he said it himself. He sentenced a lot of Christian people to death. He gave, he, 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 he destroyed a lot of people's lives until he met Jesus. And he gave his all for Jesus. He obeyed Jesus in everything and everywhere including and some, some things that came to him. He always obeyed Jesus, including in a dark, damp dungeon, when he was in a shipwreck, when he was being beaten, and when he was in the worst of places. Paul obeyed and surrendered his life to Christ. The Spirit of God took control over Paul's life. And I want you to understand something you know, you know about the Apostle Paul. He wrote, most of the New Testament. He wrote most of the New Testament. And in, 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 uh, 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 watch this now. In Romans 8 and 5, Paul kept his eyes on Jesus. Paul focused his mind on God's will and not on his own will. Read the scripture. Paul tells us to set our minds on Jesus. For he says this as one of my favorite scriptures. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But those who are of the Spirit, mind the things of the Spirit. For even though we, just like Paul, we never finish fighting our flesh until the Lord calls us to heaven. And when, uh, 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 we, we, but, but we still going to have something while we fight in the flesh. The Spirit reigns inside of us. He rules inside of us. Even though, even though, but, you know, but, but, but you know what? When the spirit is in control, we, 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 we will not only have joy and peace, but we will also have power over our flesh. For the spirit of God empowers us. It empowers us so that we can overcome the flesh. Catch, catch the point now, y'all. You're in a fight. You're going to be in a fight. You're in a fight right now. You're going to be in a fight and until the end comes. So while you are in this fight, you need power to stay in the fight, number one. And then you need power to win in the fight, number two. 
And then you need power to hang in there until the fight is over with. And, and uh, you know, we, we, we forget that. We forget that. And that's why we say something that is not always peaches and cream. After you got saved, the battle starts after you got saved. Can I stop and make a point and plug a pin in here? It starts after you get saved because, help me somebody, you're on the wrong side before you get saved. When you get saved, help me somebody, that side you used to be on not going to go away. Not right away. It's a process. To walk in the Spirit is to be reliant, to depend on God for everything. This includes our purpose and our vision for life. It is, G, it is, is Jesus through the Holy Ghost. Watch my point, y'all. I'm going to talk about God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost all the way through. It is Jesus through the Holy Ghost who will give you a vision for life. The Bible says this, without a vision, the people perish. Amen? Uh, 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 the Spirit gives us purpose uh, in Jesus uh, we, 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 it gives us our very being. Jesus wants us to have that vision fulfilled in the purpose of God. Uh, uh, God has now sent his spirit to breathe new life in us. You know what I thought about when I read that? God breathed into us twice. The Bible says that after he made Adam, God breathed the breath of life in him. After you get saved, God breathed the Spirit of God in us again. Amen? So you got life, but you know, <laughs> when you get the Spirit. So God breathed into us twice. When we are born, when we are made, and when we are saved. Amen? Uh, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have life, and we can have it abundantly for the first time as we grow in the Spirit. Let me quote something. Mother Teresa says, the worst condition in life is to be nobody to nobody. The worst condition in life is to be nobody to nobody. With a strong faith in God and a close walk with Jesus and the Holy Spirit living in power within us, we know that we are somebody. Y'all let me say it again. With a strong faith in God, amen, and a close walk with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, that makes us somebody. And it calls us to overcome the old ways. We climb those mountains we dare not to climb. And, 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 and those that our fleshly body and our old self would keep us from. Life becomes exciting as we see God do a work in us in areas we never dreamed could change. Amen? Second part, walking in the Spirit requires a, a strong commitment of obedience from us. We cannot walk in the Spirit without having that strong obedience within us. As we begin this walk, we must commit ourselves to obedience in Christ that starts with a personal relationship with Jesus. Through prayer, through praise, staying in the Word, staying in the Word, we are called to love others unselfishly, Reach out to those who are hurting in the name of Jesus. That's what walking in the Spirit is. As we obey and keep our eyes on Jesus, Romans 12 and 2 talks to us, Jesus starts to transform into us his image. Romans 12 and 2 tells us, and be not conformed. That's one, another one of my favorite scripture. To this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Leave it up there, Brother K. Two words, conform and transform, which means don't, don't get in the bed with the world, but let God change you 
And how he's going to do that, that's, that's the favorite preaching scripture, y'all. How he's going to do that, he's going to renew our mind. Amen? And I, I praise the Lord, minister said that's the theme, that, that we may prove the good stuff, the acceptable stuff, and the perfect what? Will of God. That's where we at, y'all. Amen? As we grow in Christ, as citizen of his kingdom, and as a soldier in his army, we are, are, we are soldiers. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. As we grow in Christ, as a citizen of his kingdom, and as a soldier in his army, watch what we do. We align ourselves, especially our hearts, with the loving God. We begin to realize truly, when you do that, you realize something. Greater is he that's in us than him that's in the world. We find that out. We begin to realize that we can throw ourselves into this thing called Christian faith. And that the things of this world become strange to us. Become strangely dim and insignificant. Another point. And we begin to see this. We begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that truly we can become conquerors of Christ. In Christ. As we grow. As we grow. We become, we see the light that will cause us to see that we can become conquerors in Christ. God has an unlimited storehouse of blessing for us. I like the definition. I was counting. I said, wait a minute. Number one, he has an unlimited storehouse of blessing for us. Number two, God's spirit is unlimited in power as to what he can do for us. That word unlimited. But first of all, we need to do our part. We need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Receive God's, I'm sorry, Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost more abundantly. We must desire it deeply from our hearts. Let me, I messed that up. I chopped that up. For us to receive the Spirit of God, we have to desire it deeply in our hearts. We got to develop a loving and intimate relationship with God. Here we go again with Jesus Christ as we focus on what he wants us to do. That is why the basic of our faith is so important. There are certain things that we must do to grow in Christ. And here come the questions, y'all. Are you praying constantly? Are you reading your Bible daily? Are you loving your life of praise and worship? That's some good questions here. Are you reaching out to others? Are you part of a church body that stands together and minister together? Are you part of a church body that stands together and minister together, not divided? Do you repent and confess when you do wrong? Do you love Jesus more than anything else? These are some difficult questions. But it's some question that's going to probe our heart as we walk with the Spirit of God and develop that spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ and become obedient to God. Is there any habitual or constant sin that's a roadblock that keeps you from walking in the Spirit? Are you obeying God's commandment? Walking in the Spirit is hard work, y'all. And it's a matter of submitting to God rather than to our fleshly desires. It also involves a total different way of thinking. I found out something, just thought about something. I found the enemy. And the enemy is within us. It is our flesh. God will increase his Holy Spirit in direct proportion to how much we love him and how much we obey him. As the Spirit lives more and more in us, the flesh decreases. Remember what I said from the beginning? You start off fighting this war. You are in this fight, 
and you will be in this fight to the end. But the more you love God, the more you're uh, obedient to God, the less and less the flesh becomes in our lives. Almost finished, y'all. One good test of how we are walking with the Spirit. Amen? And that is our reaction to our personal sin. I'm going to walk through this one. I'm going to walk through this, and you can slug. I'm going to slug slowly through this. How do you see your sin? Question. How do you look at your sin? Do you see your sin totally in a different light than you used to? What that's saying there? Are you committing the same sin, but then, again, you see it differently now? Does your sin and its consequences, do it really break your heart? These are some questions, these are some probing questions here. Do you weep over sin as Jesus did when he wept over the sins of Jerusalem? To walk in the Spirit means to moan over our sin. Jesus tells us that in the Beatitudes. Do you moan over your own sin and the sins of other people and the consequences of sin that you see about you in this world? It's simply saying, do you moan over your sin? If you do moan over your sin, do you moan over other sin? You know, uh, 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 it makes you feel bad to see that kind of stuff. The person who moans, Romans, uh, uh, where I'm at, I'm not there yet. Uh, 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 the person who moans over the sin and the sins of others. The person who walks in the spirit takes sin very, very seriously. And that person cannot wait to confess and get right with God when sin invades his or her life. What is your reaction? to sin, and particularly to our own sin. Last point, last point, we're getting close. Uh, when we are walking in the Spirit, we will see God's greatness. We're going to see his power. We see his love, his grace, and his mercy. Our eyes will be open to understand better when we talk about amazing grace. We can understand amazing grace better when we walk with the Spirit, that grace that includes salvation when we did not really deserve it. As the famous old hymn goes, I once was blind, but now I see. You see, the Spirit removes the blindness, and then it draws our heart to the living Jesus Christ. To walk in the Spirit is not just to understand more about grace, but it is also to be ready to receive grace in a much more abundance. We get to the end in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. It spells it out clearly. And ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so what should you do? Walk ye in him, which means to walk like him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been thought, abounding therein with thanksgiving when you walk in the Lord. When you walk in the Lord. He also says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10, amen? Paul goes on to tell us, to tell us this, that when we get to Colossians chapter 8, verse, I mean chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, beware, lest any man, and that happened to so many of us, spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. The Lord is warning us, watch it now. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete, which is the head of all principality and all power. 
the Lord is explaining to us. The Lord is reminding us that we must walk in the Spirit. The times that you are not walking in the Spirit, be careful, for you can walk in the flesh. Remember what I told you, that the, the uh, Scripture says to us, there is a battle within us. When you want to do right, you end up doing wrong. When you want to do right, you end up doing wrong. When you want to do what's right, you end up doing what's wrong. That's the fight that's in us. And, and, and let me tell you something. Now, there, that, 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 there are times that we will lose some battles, but we have yet to lose the war because Jesus already won the war. But when you lose the battle to your flesh, see what you've done and hurry yourself for confession and for forgiveness. The Bible says, let me tell you something. I don't, if you're out there and you're feeling as if you've done something that cannot be forgiven, the Bible says God is faithful to forgive us of all of our sins. So I say to you now, right now, you ought to confess your sins. Even if you confess it to yourself, guess who's hearing you? Guess who's hearing you? The Spirit of God who will transform it, who will, trans, who will send it up to God, and God will forgive you of your sins. That's how you walk in with the Spirit. And, 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 and you're not going to always do right. I want you to understand that. They're not gonna, you're not going to always, your thoughts. Now watch this. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm done. The renewing of the mind. And why would God renew my mind? Because I sin with my mind. And God will take that mind and renew it, will transform it, and stop it from conforming with the world all the time. And, and, and that's what it means to walk in the Spirit and to walk a victorious life. Stop bragging because you beat somebody in a game. Why don't you take solace, take, take satisfaction that you have won over the flesh, that you have beaten the flesh, that you resisted the flesh. Because, man, that flesh is a phenom. But the Spirit of God is a greater phenom. We must walk by faith and not by the flesh. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the lesson that you have taught us this morning, this, this afternoon. And that you will continue to teach us every day. Give, let the Spirit give us the power now to empower ourselves over the flesh. We bless you today. We thank you for those who are listening to us, who have listened to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I feel